Adam Malkin and welcome to It Ain't Rocket Science. We are here on the deck of the Intrepid Sea, Air and Space Museum in New York where the Space Shuttle Enterprise's protective pavilion is still on the mend after the battering it received from Hurricane Sandy. But not to worry, the spaceship itself was not harmed and will again be on display to the public early this summer. In the meantime, the museum has a new exhibit, Space Shuttle Enterprise, a pioneer. For the visitor, there is still much aviation history to see here. and. Speaking of good American ingenuity, the first robotics competition is in full swing as teams from around the country need head-to-head -head in regional competitions. We'll take you there for a look at the new game as students climb to the top and onto the finals in St. Louis. In Houston and New York City, teams got the chance to crack computer coding. We'll get plugged in with young coders competing in HP Code Wars and join some gamers getting a behind-the-scenes look at what goes into designing a video game. Students in Ohio and North Carolina are taking a more physical approach to their learning as they build their own airplane models and learn the aerodynamics of flight. And in Texas, we take a trip to NASA's Johnson Space Center, where the astronauts earn their wings and train for their mission to space. And don't forget to join the conversation during the show. Tweet at Connect Minds to share your thoughts as we go. But before we go anywhere, let's take a closer look at a recent close encounter we had here on Earth with one of our flyby neighbors. It came much closer than the moon and even closer than some orbiting satellites. Earlier this year, we had a historical visit from one of our solar neighbors as asteroid 2012 DA14 came whizzing past the Earth. A visit by one of Earth's rocky siblings may have been a little too close for comfort. While it wasn't quite a Hollywood asteroid experience, the flyby visitor measured 150 feet across and came within 17,000 miles of the Earth closer than many of our own communications and weather satellites. But scientists say it never posed a real threat. Uh, people that track asteroids using radar uh, in particular, but also optically, were able to get a very, very tight constraint on its orbit. Denton Abel is a resident expert on asteroids at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. This record-breaking close encounter marks the closest asteroid drive-by that scientists have known about in advance. NASA researchers say they've mapped out the orbits of 90% of the biggest and most dangerous near-Earth asteroids, and none of them threaten collision with the rock we call home. And we think there are probably a lot more out there, but they're much smaller. In the last decade or so, our ability to find objects, to track objects, has grown tremendously. Another asteroid exploded over Russia in mid-February, creating a giant fireball in the sky and releasing a sonic boom that shook buildings for miles, leaving hundreds injured. But Denton ensures that these types of events are rare. Later this year, we'll see a comet that could shine as bright as the moon as it passes by Earth. While there's still much mystery surrounding what's out of sight, you can be sure to get a spectacular show if you keep your eye on the sky. Now, it may seem daunting that there are so many unknowns when it comes to space, but some individuals actually dedicate their lives to helping uncover the secrets of the universe. We visited NASA's Johnson Space Center, where U.S. astronauts are trained, and had the opportunity to talk to a would-be pioneer about the program and his great expectations. Daisy Gonzalez has the story. Mike Massimino always wanted to be an astronaut. So I was six years old when uh, Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. I remember watching that from my living room in Long Island, and uh, that, uh, that really affected me. The astronauts are my heroes. I dressed up like an astronaut. Um, my mom made me a, a, my, an astronaut costume that I could wear and I pretended like I was an astronaut. And I guess I just never grew up. But. And so began Mike's career of venturing into the great unknown. Over the past 17 years, he's flown two missions and spent over 30 hours spacewalking to deliver key upgrades and repairs to the Hubble telescope. The most incredible experience I've ever had was, was getting to spacewalk and work on the Hubble Space Telescope being in a spacesuit, you know, traveling around the Earth 17,500 miles an hour, the magnificent view of the Earth and of the universe and the stars around you, of the moon. I really felt like I was looking at the paradise. That's how beautiful the planet is. Mike and other astronauts train here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. They run through system checks and even navigate a miniature version of the International Space Station and do so in a low-gravity environment. 
at the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory, space travelers in training dive into the depths of this gigantic 40-foot deep tank in full gear and learn what it's like to work in the harsh vacuum of space. The most challenging thing for me, for me as an astronaut really was, was passing my swim test. I, I remember getting my letter from NASA. The first thing we were going to do was take a swim test so that we could go to water survival school with the Navy in Pensacola. And like, what did I get myself into here? In order to, to, to do my job, uh, I needed to learn how to to become like an Aquaman. You know? And uh, so, believe it or not, for me, that was probably the most challenging thing I had to do as an astronaut. While he remains on active duty, he does what he can on land to share his experience with others. He says Gene Kranz, the flight director from the precarious Apollo 13 mission, had the best advice for young people. I'm gonna steal Gene Kranz's line. He was a flight director in Apollo 13. He says there's five words to remember for young people. First one is dream. The next two words are aim high. And the third, the third thing, the next two words, never surrender. And I think that's, that's the thing to remember, is that when you, you do poorly in something, you're not alone. It took me four tries to become an astronaut. I was rejected four times by NASA. Can't let um, failure or not doing well stop you. And that's why successful people are successful, because everybody fails, but the people who are successful don't let that stop them. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Daisy Gonzalez. Not all travel charts, of course, to the heavens. A group of students in Ohio have their feet firmly on the ground, but are willing to take their first giant leap into the unknown as they learn about the basics behind aerodynamics by building their own miniature gliders. It was a day full of flight as students from the Urban League of Greater Cleveland took a swing at building their own model planes and testing their flyability, but it wasn't always smooth sailing. First, we made the airplanes, but you had to put them together. It was really hard. Flight Test, an organization for aeronautic enthusiasts, organized this event. It's giving these young aviators an introduction to the aerodynamics of flight and the basic engineering of airplanes. I learned that airplanes are controlled in different kinds of ways. The elevator goes, can go up or down. The rudder go, can go side, left or right. We got to ride on the uh, simulation chair, like, like the controls on the bottom. So if you go this way, you go that way. Once they got the basics down, these students got to work cutting, measuring, and putting together their gliders. And then came the best part, takeoff. The fun part of the day was flying the air. Flying our own airplanes that we made were cool like because some of them like some of them went far and some of them like just went high. If the program is able to propel students into the sciences, the organizers will have done their job. For it ain't rocket science, I'm Rocco Bertuccio. Students in North Carolina took their journey toward discovery one step further and incorporated an engine and other moving parts to meet their lofty goals, spending more than one month building a remote-controlled airplane from start to finish. Our Leland Pinder was there to take off. Eighth grader Dallas Tolley has always been interested in airplanes. I'm actually planning to be in the Air Force, so this is kind of a big thing for me. The 13-year-old and a couple dozen of her classmates spent six weeks building an airplane from start to finish. Each got a turn to man the controls as it took flight for the first time. It took a while to build this, and I mean, to see how it turns out and the results of it, it, seemed, it seems pretty cool. While creating their masterpiece through their school science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM program, these students learned about aerospace engineering, the anatomy of an airplane, and manufacturing. Students formed teams each tasked with creating a portion of the plane. Some worked on the wings while others worked on the fuselage or the tail. Much like the real world, following directions proved critical and teamwork essential. We had like team communication and everything. And with following directions actually like, that was really nice. Well, if you didn't follow directions then it wasn't gonna turn out right. And then we had some problems, but I think it ended up good in the end. As for the future Air Force pilot, flying a plane is just something you wouldn't expect doing in your life. But equipped with the knowledge and skills that STEM education provides, dreams can become reality and the sky is the limit. STEM is awesome! For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Leland Pender. It's a viral video that some see as a rallying cry that could marshal tech forces to the aid of the country. We'll take a closer look at how computer coding could be the wave of the future and show you how some teams
are getting plugged in early. For more information about Connect a Million Minds and to find science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities in your community, visit connectamillionminds.com during the break. 